With all the confusion around long reach and short reach and bikes coming out in sizes like C1 and S2 and long and longer, it's pretty hard to figure out whether you're on the right size bike or not. Yeah, so here are 10 clues that you could well be on the wrong size bike, and more importantly, how to remedy that if you're gonna make a future purchase. Uh, we're actually gonna swap bikes today, which I'm, that was your idea, um, to, to overly accentuate some of the problems that you're gonna have with a bike that's too small or too large. Uh, don't forget, you can support us by subscribing. It's all free content on our channel here at GMBN Tech, and we wear some cool stuff, so check out the shop. There'll be a link floating around somewhere, and you can look like us. Okay, number one, your bike being too small. Right, so obviously this is quite an extreme example of a bike being too small, uh, but there's a number of things that can happen when you're on a bike that's too small. Now the first one actually could be a positive from some people's eyes. Ah, oh, it's small, we can throw it around. Yep, indeed you can, but for any normal riding, not necessarily a good thing. So the obvious thing first that you're gonna see with this bike is my knee is incredibly close to the stem, handlebars, and the shifters. Now the bike is also gonna feel immensely twitchy as well because your body weight is like a giant pendulum because the bike is so relatively small, whatever movements you, you make basically on the bike really affects uh, what goes on on the terrain. Now something else that really does have a dramatic difference to how stable you feel on the bike is when you're out the saddle. If I was to stand in the same position I would be on my own bike, I'd be incredibly upright on this, which means as soon as I come to a climb, I'm gonna to have to load up the front of the bike, and as soon as I get to the descent, excessively off the back of the bike to have a relatively normal position. And the effect this has is your thighs are loaded the entire time, which means on long descents, it becomes really tiring. And of course, fatigue can lead to crashes and just general, just not a nice feeling on the bike. <laughs> Being on a big bike might feel confidence inspiring at first, but it just means that you've got greater distance to move when you need to weight different parts of the bike. So you might find that pumping the trail, even cornering is difficult because of the big movements that you have to make. You may even find it's difficult to get off as well. <laughs> Even on the correct size bike, it can be difficult to get your cockpit in the correct position. But if your bike is too small for you, you may end up running your bars too low to try and make the bike feel a bit longer. By having a really low front end of the bike that's too small for you, you're gonna make certain maneuvers quite difficult, like pick out the front wheel, for example, for a manual. So technically, because the bike's too small, you could pick it up, but you're actually gonna be doing this in a bit of a weird way. So if the bike fits you correctly, you're using literally parts of your anatomy, using your glutes really to sort of throw the bike backwards um, and into a manual. And then of course, there's the actual discomfort that you're gonna get from having a position like this. If you're a tall rider and you're running your bars too low, you're gonna get wrist pain. I've had this many times over the years on bikes that have been the wrong size. You can get it on a bike that's too long for you as well. So it's not always the case of things. But you've got to bear in mind that just by having your bias too low, it's gonna put you in a bit more of an unnatural position. Your bias is gonna to be towards the front wheel. You're gonna be looking up a lot more than you should be when you're at a neutral angle on the bike. And it's just not a brilliant place to be on the bike, to be honest. Clues that your handlebars might be too high, or you might feel a bit scrunched up and your steering might feel a bit vague because you do actually need to be a little bit on top of the front wheel to control it. Imagine riding a chopper around a trail, that wouldn't be so good at all. Now, there's no magic formula on how to fix that or how to work out how high they should be, but just move your stem up and down by about one centimeter at a time and see which way feels better. Now, if you've got a size small or a medium bike and you're quite a taller rider, you'll notice you've got a lot of post hanging out the frame. Now, obviously I'm on the absolute limit on Anna's bike here of the height of it. And you can see how ridiculously low the saddle is. Uh, that's with it up, yeah? So you've got to bear in mind that pedaling a bike is absolutely essential. You need to be able to pedal at the top of those climbs to enjoy the descents. So for example, on this bike, if I was to have the saddle up this high, look at the seat angle on that bike. Yeah, the saddle is going to get further and further towards the rear wheel, which means the weight bias on the bike is gonna be all over the place. And this is all stemming from the bike being too small for you. And the final point to make with saddle height in terms of the bike being too small is you might simply not be able to get the saddle high enough, which means you're not gonna get maximum extension at your legs. You're not gonna be using your legs efficiently. Now, if I sit on Anna's laughably small bike here, 
Look at my leg, look at the angle of that. This is straining my quad massively when I'm trying to put power down. The general rule of thumb for setting your saddle height would be pedal at the bottom of the stroke, put your ankle on there, set your saddle so your leg is almost locked out. So that way when you put your ball of the foot on there, you have a slight curve to your leg. So getting the maximum use out of your leg muscles uh, on the bike. And of course, to do that on Anna's bike, I would have to have the saddle literally about this high, uh, which would be ridiculous. Okay, so even though I'm riding up a tiny little slope here, I can feel the strain in my thighs. You just can't get the power down when you can't get the saddle up to the correct height. It's pretty simple, really. And like I said, if I was to put the saddle up to a height that would actually work on this bike, you'd completely upset the geometry of the bike. And it'd just, it'd just be awful. If your saddle height is too high, you may find that your toes are pointing or your knees lock out as your legs straighten. And you may find that you'll move from side to side on the saddle as your hips rock for your legs to reach the extended part of your pedal. And this isn't great because locking out your knees can give you knee pain over time. Rocking from side to side can give you lower back pain and you're just generally not being efficient because you're not using all of your muscles to create those nice big circles. Now I tend to use the inseam measurement on my leg to match the saddle to pedal height just as a guide but if you're changing your saddle make sure you only change it about five to ten mil at a time. So just to illustrate the point on Doddy's bike I'm pretty much only getting power at the top part of my stroke. At the bottom there's nothing. You also won't have enough weight on the outside foot when you're cornering either. Now, you'll have heard the term reach used a lot in terms of how big bikes are, quite a lot. But what exactly is a reach? I hear some of you wondering. Uh, simply put, it's a measurement to measure the front center of the bike. So the front center, essentially, is bottom bracket axle to the front wheel axle. But it's not quite that simple as measuring that. Okay, so to get the reach, you would draw a vertical line through the bottom bracket and then a horizontal to meet the top of the head tube here in the center of the stem. And that gives you an indication of how long the bike is when you're stood up. So you get the top tube length, which is relevant when you're sat down, but the reach is relevant when you're stood up. And that's super important in mountain biking compared to any other form of biking, because all your dynamic stuff happens when you're stood up. So if you've got a bike and the reach is too short for you, your body weight is gonna be far too high on the bike. Now, accordingly, you're gonna end up moving your body weight way too far forwards and too far back constantly, almost like a pendulum, to try and get the best weight position on the bike. So I'm just going to demonstrate this in two little ways. So firstly, off the bike, if you imagine putting your hands and your feet on the floor, trying to crawl along on all fours, if I was to do it like this, I'd be really unstable and someone's to push me, super easy to fall over. Whereas if I'm like this, my balance point is so much better because my weight is distributed between my arms and my, and my legs. And when it comes to being on the bike, I'm going to give you a couple of examples here using Anna's bike and my own bike. Now, if you think of it, the correct size bike being like an equilateral triangle and the distance between your head and the wheels being something like an equal triangle, basically, when you're on the bike. So your body weight is in the middle of where the wheels are, your head representing the extra point. And then you think of the bike being too small and in relation, so uh, an isosceles triangle, so the bottom two points are basically really close together and the top one's really high up. That's the equivalent. And you'll see, if I stand up as I just roll past, you'll see I'm in a really unnatural position. So you probably noticed I was quite central on the bike, but I was very upright, which means uh, to get down nice and low on the bike, I'm using my thighs a lot more. Uh, I'm not balancing weight between my legs and my hands. And also, you'll have noticed when I rode through on my own bike, it's pretty neutral and as a comfortable position, I'm ready to react the whole time. But reacting on a bike with a reach that suits your body height means you don't have to make dramatic movements because you're in a really good central position. When you're on a bike that's too small, yeah, all right, arguably you can throw them around, as has been proven by Jack Moyer, the EWS elite racer who famously chooses a bike that's a bit on the short side for what he should pick on paper. But that doesn't necessarily apply to everyone else out there because he is in like the top, you know, the top percentage of the world's best riders. For general riders, it's going to fit you better if you have a bias that's going to sit you over the centre of the bike. So reach is a really important measurement to get correct.
Now we've heard a lot of new bikes come out lately with longer reach. And that is a good thing to have enough space to maneuver your bike when you stood up out of the saddle. But if your bike is too long in the reach, then you've got too much space to move around and to weight the bike in different places. Imagine if you were doing a press up where your hands were really far away and imagine how much strength that's gonna to require to keep you up in that position and how little control you'll have over your hands if they're that far away as well. So longer isn't always better. When you're out of the saddle in technical or steep terrain, you'll often move backwards to recenter that bike as it's going downhill. Now, if your reach is too long, you're gonna be so far away from your handlebars. Your arms might even be straight or stretched out and you're gonna to struggle to maneuver the front end of that bike and even weight the front and keep the grip on the front tire as well. Okay, so handlebars too narrow. Now, although Anna's bars are plenty wide enough, I've just moved the controls in to demonstrate something which we'll get to in a minute. Now, there's a few things to consider here with bar width. Now, there's no official way of measuring the correct bar width for you. It will differ depending on your anatomy, the way that you want to ride as well. It's not like saddle height where there is a fixed rule to getting the best out of your legs. There's only generic rules you can apply. But if you were to have handlebars that are too narrow, one of the effects you're going to have is you're going to be more upright on your bike. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, it just means uh, if your bike isn't gonna fit you and you have narrow bars, it's gonna feel even shorter. If you have wider bars on a bike that's quite small, you're returning your position back to a more central position on the bike. So on paper, a wider bar is slightly better if your bike doesn't fit you. However, you can't just have a wide bar on it and expect it to handle right if you're not a tall rider. So there's lots to take into account. Now, something to think about with narrow handlebars. Uh, if you're in a turn with narrow handlebars, A, you're gonna be quite upright on the bike, but B, you're gonna to have to accentuate your movement on the bike to get in a good position. Whereas when you're on a wider setting, you're kind of, it's just, you don't have to move as much on the bike. It's much easier to have a bit of leverage over the front of the bike than it is with a more upright position that you get with narrow bars. They can feel quite awkward when you're riding technical terrain. But at the same time, as we have seen with enduro racing, some riders on some courses are trimming handlebars down to gain a bit more clearance if you're riding somewhere tight in between trees. So the geography of where you ride also comes into play. If your handlebars are too wide, you're gonna find it hard to maneuver the bike. Now obviously steering would be a little bit difficult. You might get some achy shoulders and also think about when you're leaning into corners, it's gonna feel like a bit of a fight, especially as your inside hand gets further and further away. You may actually struggle to stay on the outside and weight the bike and maintain grip. Now imagine that press up position again. Imagine that your hands are really far apart. You're gonna require a lot of strength to keep that position but you're also gonna have almost locked out elbows. And that means less movement for steering, less movement to take hits on the front wheel, and also less suspension when you take front on hits on rough terrain. Well, hopefully that's helped you identify a few clues as to whether you're on a bike too big or too small for you. But don't hastily go out and buy a new bike. We do have guides on uh cockpit position and saddle position. There's gonna be a few videos floating around. So regardless if your bike is too small, too big, or it in fact does fit you, uh, you're gonna be able to get the most out of it, whatever it is. So uh, hopefully that will help you. Uh, got any suggestions for more videos, please let us know down there. And we'll see you in the next one soon. Ta-ra.